This video is going to be different than most of the videos that I do because it's not a technical video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how I generate ideas for data-driven stories and data visualizations because the way that you might first approach it is probably not the best way to approach it. Uh, secret, like if you, if you don't want to watch the whole video, um, the answer is reading things, um, not looking for data, but we'll kind of step through the process in this video and see how it works out with a very specific example. So what we're going to start with is some Substack newsletter that was linked from some other newsletter that I read earlier this week. And I found a very interesting tidbit in it, which is that 20,000 Russian villages have been completely abandoned in recent years, and 36,000 others have fewer than 10 inhabitants left and will follow them soon. A third of land once farmed in the former USSR has now been abandoned. So that's interesting, and this is something that can be our jumping off point. It can be our start. What you might do initially if you have kind of a narrow view of things, is you say, okay, I'm just going to make this be my story. Um, you're going to Google something about, you know, the Russian census. You're going to end up on their census webpage. You're going to scroll around, download some stuff, and attempt to maybe make a map of this, make a chart of this, show, you know, the trend is going down. Um, here's all of the places that exist in Russia that, you know, don't exist anymore because uh, everyone died or moved or whatever. But that is, I would say, a very narrow way of looking at things. What I want us to do is take this idea and then spin it into something a little bit bigger or kind of research the field and see what else we can come up with. So if we're thinking about the idea of Russian villages being abandoned um, and other places that have fewer than 10 inhabitants left, we might call that depopulation right so there were people there and now there aren't people there let's learn a little bit more about depopulation so what we'll do is we'll just search it on wikipedia i'm going to look up depopulation going to find wikipedia and i'm going to just click the first three links here um, population reduction human population planning and population decline along with that along with the concept of you know, there being fewer people, there's also the concept here of abandoned places. Now, when we think about abandoned places, at least in my mind, I think about ghost towns. So ghost towns being places that had people, people no longer live there, but there are still buildings there. Um, I also think of uh, urban uh, exploration. Um, so the idea of when you have usually abandoned places that people can, can explore. So these are going to be all of our starting points. Population decline, human population planning, population reduction. Oh, that's nothing. We'll just get rid of it. Ghost towns and urban exploration. And what we're going to do now is we're literally just going to read these Wikipedia pages. Because as you read the Wikipedia pages, every now and again, there are little interesting bits that come out. So the human growth rate accelerated at some point. Uh, now it has declined. The global gro gro growth rate has changed. Here's what projections are. Examples are Japan. Examples are China. Examples are the projection of Europe in the future. All of these are different things that we could click on and learn about more and turn into a story on our own. For example, uh, we're saying in China, whose population could start declining in 2027 or sooner. And you think, okay, I might go search China population projections. No, don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. What you want to do is just this little four here say, okay, where did this information come from? Where was this cited? It's a piece in the New York Times. We're going to open it up and we're going to see. Okay. Oh, come on. It's because I'm in incognito mode. It won't let me read this. Okay. So as we start to read through this, we see that this is already a data-driven story, right? They say, you know, here's what it was. Here's the projection. Here's one way of visualizing it, another way of visualizing it, another way of visualizing it whether it's the population, whether it's the fertility rate, um, different ways of, of projecting it here. 
if we feel like we can't write the story about China because we're looking at this story and it's already about China, so we would be embarrassed to write the same story the New York Times did, also we'd probably do a worse job at it, um, there are two things that we can do. Number one, we can see when this was published and see if maybe we can update it. In this case, this interactive is from 2019, so it's pretty recent, so there probably wouldn't be any benefit to redoing it. But because this was specifically about China, we can get inspiration from all of these different ways the data was visualized and maybe do it about another country. And you might think, well, what other country could we do this about? And I say, look, we're still doing research. We're still doing research, right? We don't want China data yet. We don't want data from other countries yet. We just know, okay, let's save this page. We'll keep it as an open tab or something. We'll remember these are different ways it can be visualized. We might think, oh, fertility rates. Maybe that's something else we can search on Wikipedia. But for now, we'll just keep reading through population decline. It talks about all the different reasons why it could go up, why the population could go down. And now we get to, oh, hey, contemporary decline by country. There's all kinds of different countries. So if instead of talking about China, we wanted to talk about Latvia, we can scroll down to Latvia. We can see, okay, how have people talked about Latvia? Well, they have a negative natural population growth but there's also a negative net migration rate. So I, I would assume this is the idea that um, people are more likely to move out of Latvia than into Latvia. So that's another angle we could approach this from. Let's check this 52 site here. Let's check this, oh, it's the same citation there. So what do we learn about Latvia? Oh, this is not a New York Times piece. This is not a fancy piece here. Maybe that is an opportunity for us to make something that is a nice data-driven piece about Latvia instead of it being the New York Times piece about China. Now, these stories are usually better when there's some sort of event that happened. For example, example the Chinese piece kind of focuses on the one-child policy. If we scroll down here, if we can find an, uh, one of these sections that is a little bit bigger, um, a little bit more, you know, um, information about what's going on here. Like, for example, Russia. Further information, Russian cross. And you say, okay, what's the Russian cross? I don't know what the Russian cross is. You click here. Uh, it's a demographic trend that occurred in Russia uh, as a result of the Warsaw Pact. And you're like, well, what's the Warsaw Pact? You click through and you think, okay, uh, it has to do with, you know, uh, Eastern Bloc countries. And you say, okay, maybe... I can dig into the Warsaw Pact and I could do a piece much like the New York Times piece about China, but instead of highlighting it happened as a result of the one child policy, I could contextualize it uh, in relationship to the Russian cross. And look at all these things that we could talk about here. All these things, you just read all this, you make a story about it, it's great. It's wonderful, you're having a good time. All of this stuff, every single one of these little citations here, there's a chance that it has some sort of information or some sort of charts or some sort of graphics or some sort of data that we could spin into a story. Because unlike, let's say, the Federal Statistics Service from Russia, which is just kind of dumping information out, oftentimes the citation pages on Wikipedia are more academic papers, they're a little bit more specific, the graphics are probably going to be uglier and things that you could remake into an actual data-driven piece. So along with this, um, population decline, sure, uh, ghost towns, also fun. We could read through this ghost town one and it says we got deserted cities, we got abandoned cities, great. What are some reasons why they might get abandoned? We'll go down here. They talk about some certain reasons. Along with the general trend of ghost towns, though, if we looked for ghost town data, the data that we might get is really just a map of ghost towns, which I would say isn't that interesting. Um, you could just say, here's stuff that happened, uh, you know, here's a map, we're kind of done. There's not much you can do. But if we start to read through this, 
it might start to give us ideas about specific cities that we could highlight and contextualize the idea of ghost towns. So for example, flooding by dams. Uh, let's see, we can say the lost villages of Ontario, they were flooded by a seaway construction in 1958. That seems pretty fun. Click through to this. Um, it was 10 communities that were in Ontario. They ended up being flooded. We scroll down, we see an animation here that's about changes to the river as a result of the dam. Is this animated? Doesn't oh, the little babyist animation maybe? I think this could make a really good scrolly telling piece where as you scroll down, you can see the changes in um, where the flooding is, where the dam, the dam was constructed. Um, you know, doesn't have to be data in terms of numbers. It can be data also in terms of here's a map, here's an annotated map. Um, <clears throat> what else have we got here? Uh, disease and contamination. You know, we live in the age of COVID. Um, going through something like, let's see, dioxins, no, let's actually find something that is, I guess these aren't really diseases. Oh, the Great Famine. Okay, so um, some places in e eastern Arkansas were abandoned after more than 7,000 Arkansas, Arkansans died during the Spanish flu epidemic. Everyone loves to talk about Spanish flu now because it's the closest thing we have to COVID. Hey, look at that. We have a citation here. We have another citation here. Uh, I guess that's not that's not going to be a very good one because this link isn't going to get us anywhere. Um, so we might have to do a little bit more research outside of Wikipedia to talk about Arkansas during the Spanish flu. Um, ghost town. Re it's just you read, you read, you read, and then you find all of these citations and. You go through and you check them out. Maybe you find a story that's not necessarily data-driven. Um, maybe you find literally nothing but things locked behind um, different kinds of uh, paywalls. But the idea is don't search for data. Search for things that are interesting. Um, so in Algeria, many cities became hamlets after the end of late antiquity. Um, but after the French colonization of Algeria, um, Iran became the nation's second largest city uh, in Algeria when it was a village of only a few thousand people before colonization. So we do not have a citation there, but it might be very easy to show maybe the change in shape of uh, Iran over that time. Now, you know, I was doing a little bit of searching beforehand and found some fun stuff um, about... No, we're never going to find it. Never going to find it. Anyway, just trust that this is a great way to come up with ideas, browsing Wikipedia, looking at the citations, finding little tiny mentions here and there about things that might be able to be spun uh, into a nice big story. Anything that is a sentence that is important enough to be in Wikipedia and not deleted by an overzealous editor, you can probably, probably, probably spin that whole thing into a story. Just don't search for data automatically. Read, read, read. Come up with a list of stories. Come up with context about this. If you wrote a story about population decline in Russia simply based on that one sentence that we had before where it said 20,000 Russian villages have been abandoned, all you could do is make a map. You don't know why villages end up being abandoned. You don't know why these places with fewer than 10 inhabitants are going to be gone soon. You might think, oh, they're going to move, they're going to die. But if you start to read these things about population decline, um, if you start to learn about negative net migration rate, then you'll start to have more words that you can throw with that, more supplementary data sets that we can put in there. Um, just more information you have, even if you're not an expert on the topic, if you gain, you know, 30 minutes of reading on Wikipedia, you're going to do way better in your ability to contextualize the eventual data that you do find and find, you know, stories and data and information um, to start with. That is not just, hey, I saw one sentence somewhere. I'm just going to go to the Census Bureau and get some data there. So there you go. Uh, that's, that's, 
<laughs> the way that I do things. I literally just read Wikipedia and I click links. Uh, and then eventually, hopefully, I find something that's kind of fun. Good luck.